Hello, my name is Derek Murky. I've produced this video to help demonstrate the use of intraoperative fluorescent imaging during coronary artery bypass graft surgery. We personally perform our bypass grafts on the arrested heart using the heart-lung machine performing the venous distal anastomosis first, the left internal thoracic artery to left internal ascending coronary artery next, and finally we perform our proximal anastomosis with the help of a side-biting clamp while on pump. We image all our vein graft coronary artery bypass grafting anastomosis using indocyan and green or ICG to ensure graft patency in the operating room as we feel this improves quality outcomes. Coronary artery bypass graft patency is the most important predictor of long-term survival following coronary artery bypass graft surgery. We feel we can improve patient outcomes after bypass surgery if we can document that the grafts are patent in the operating room. Moreover, if we detect a problem with the graft, we can correct it immediately. The use of intraoperative fluorescent imaging to assess coronary bypass grafts intraoperatively has been shown to improve patient outcomes as well as reduce the overall cost. The performance of intraoperative fluorescent imaging is rather quick. The camera is brought into position, put over the field, and the handheld injection of indocyanin green is performed in less than a minute and a half, as is shown in this video. Once the images have been acquired, the camera can simply be moved out of the way and the operation continued. Our first coronary artery bypass graft performed is to an intramyocardial circumflex coronary artery. We inject 10 cc's of a dilute indocyanin green solution followed by a chase of 10 cc's of heparinized blood. We look for the three different phases of blood supply to the heart including the arterial phase, the myocardial blush, and then the venous phase. The circumflex coronary artery is poorly visualized in this demonstration because of the poor penetration of the laser uh, used to excite the ICG which travels only one millimeter. Our next vein graft anastomosis is to the first diagonal coronary artery which will be the first of two sequential grafts performed. One sees excellent flow through the vein, the anastomosis, and the diagonal artery. Next, the blushing phase was quite brisk and the venous phase follows after the handheld injection of the heparinized blood solution. These next images demonstrate a vein graft to a ramus branch. We look at the distal and we look for three phases during the study. The most important phase is the arterial phase to ensure patency of the graft. The second phase is the myocardial blush phase. Some researchers have attempted to quantify the myocardial perfusion to the heart based on the time to peak intensity of the pixels and the maximum pixel intensity. Although this is not entirely quantifiable, qualitative assessments can be done. The final phase is the venous phase where the veins illuminate, typically after flushing with saline. Clearly, the most important bypass graft which we perform on patients is the internal mammary artery to the left anterior ascending coronary artery as it has the greatest effect on long-term survival. We take great care to ensure this graft is patent at the end of the procedure. We visualize the IMA to LAD anastomosis by injecting one cc of undiluted contrast into the heart-lung machine while the cross clamp is still on and with the mammary bulldog removed. This ensures that the only blood supply to the heart is through the internal mammary artery. In this image, there's a problem as there is no flow beyond the IMA graft. This was completely unexpected. Experiences like this have led us to use intraoperative fluorescent imaging in all of our cases. The anastomosis has to be taken down and redone carefully not to include the graft distally. The bypass graft is imaged again by injecting one cc of undiluted contrast into the heart-lung machine with the cross clamp on. The prior contrast is physically gone from the vessels, but background fluorescence is seen. As can be seen, there's brisk flow through the anastomosis and an excellent myocardial blushing. We visualize the proximal anastomosis by injecting a half a cc of undiluted contrast through a central line and flushing with 10 cc's of sterile saline. These images take 20 to 30 seconds to materialize and allow us to ensure that all bypass grafts are patent at the conclusion of the procedure. The contrast can be followed through the right heart, the left heart, and onto the ascending aorta. All grafts should illuminate together. We have found intraoperative fluorescent imaging a quick and easy to perform and a method to ensure the integrity of our bypass grafts. The immediate feedback allows the grafts to be corrected quickly and confidently. As mentioned before, the use of intraoperative fluorescent imaging during coronary bypass graft surgery 
has been associated with improved hospital outcomes and a lower hospital cost even when the cost of the procedure is considered.